Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Line Hard Beats, Matthew here, and today we are going behind the beat to look at some of the mixing elements and some of the production. We kind of looked at that last week, um, but I, I kind of want to go a little more into the production and the tracks. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get started here. I'm just going to kind of show you guys the tracks, and last, last time I did this, I just kind of showed you all the tracks um, without getting into it. This time, I'm going to try to pick a theme. So I think the way I want to do these is... When I'm going into mixing, I want to pick a theme and show you how I did that with every single track so I can show you every track and I can also show you um, the, the overall theme. So I think a good theme to start with is one that everyone always has questions about because it's one of the most vital parts of a mix, which is EQ. So we can go ahead and start off with the theme of EQ. Now, uh, I, I can show you a little bit of... Um, Kind of what I do with my EQs, I'm not going to give away all, all of it, but like I'll, I'll show you some of the primary things you want to look out for when it comes to a EQ and mixing. So, you know, a trick a lot of people know, I'm sure many people know it, but it's the sweep up where if you just automate like that, you sweep that up, it sounds pretty dope. It's a really good way to kind of add some flair, but when you get to your actual overall sound, you really want to make sure that your EQ is, you want to make sure that your sound, whatever it is, is occupying a frequency space that it owns by itself. And what I mean by that is not that, it, that it's not going to have parts of frequencies that, that have other things in there, like, like, you know, a bass might have a little bit of two, uh, four or five hundred and, you know, that would be in with that area, <clears throat> with that area. But, you know, it's really important to make sure that your, your sound stands out in a certain frequency range. We go ahead and look at my EQ right here. It's not super complicated, a couple subtractive, but I've really got, uh, oh shoot, I've really got, yeah, it's about 4.5K, really boosted. And the reason that I have this boosted is because this is the frequency range that I'm boosting. This, this sound is owning 4K, so to speak. It's, it's piercing through the mix at 4K. And when we get into this part, when there's a lot of other sounds going on, it's piercing through at 4K. These sounds have other frequencies. So that's kind of the theme I'll take you through. This is just another, it's been overloading, so I don't know if it's gonna keep doing that. Let's see if it works. Oh, hey, it's, no, never mind. Well, this is just another, I, I, this is how I originally produced it. I don't really know why I did this way, but this is basically just a layer that goes during this big drop part of the exact same sound, but it's got a little bit of panning fun and different reverb. Nothing super complicated. Then I have that piano. Uh, this one is, I think, this overloads constantly. Yeah, that's not gonna. But basically, um, this piano, I have more around that 10K. You can see I got some of that boosted there, but I have a lot more of it boosted in other plugins too, of like that really pierce through the mix kind of thing. You know, it's like that 10K kind of dun, 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 dun. So you really hear it despite all these massive sounds going on. You still wanna hear it. Um, you know, I've got this uh, this synth right here. It's kind of kind of like a buildup. Um, man, this is won't work. Then we've got this guy. We've got this guy. And you can see, you know, these are all like at the beginning phase. They all build up as they keep going because I lift this EQ. We've got this. And, and you'll notice uh, all of these are taking up a different frequency range. Got a lot more going on on here. It's mostly imaging kind of stuff. And then we've got this, I think this is like a, it's like a pitch shift thing that I made, that I kind of automatically made um, on my own just to get that feeling of a rising pitch. And yeah, like those are all in their own range. None of them are conflicting with each other in regards to EQ. Then we've got uh, what a lot of people will recognize. And this one, you know, I'll show you. Uh, so I've got the Air plugin. This is actually probably, I don't know if it's my very favorite, but it could be my very favorite plugin ever. This Air EQ by Slate Digital. It, it, the sound this thing gives is un unreal. Um, and then you're going to notice, where do I have this boosted? I have it boosted at 12.5. And the reason is because that's its frequency. 
this bell sound that you hear owns 12.5. And when you hear it with drums going on, none of these drums are competing in 12.5. Now again, it doesn't mean that that's the only area that this is actually playing. It just means that it's boosted there because that's what it owns. You know, then we've got, and I'm not, I, I don't know if any of these are actually going to let me show you. Um, I've got all these, yeah, it's going to keep overloading, unfortunately. Pretty much what these are is these are kind of those um, just bell layers of those bells. And again, these all have their own frequency range they're occupying. Then I kind of layered five different synths to do kind of a pulsating, like, sounds pretty cool when it doesn't overload at least. Um, yeah. And then these are all taken up there. I think these are all more around the 1.53K range so that none of them are conflicting with anything else. They all take up their space. And, and you know, when you come down here, when you go over here and you're looking at this, one of the best tricks I learned back when I was 16 was that one of the best ways to compare if your song is ready is to actually bring in a reference song and to compare the way these EQs look with your reference song that's similar and then you can bring this down and slowly bring it up and you know you can kind of go like this get a feel for this area then you can get a feel for this area and you can make sure that the frequencies sound good in each area um and yeah basically by doing that what you what you ensure is that um your your frequencies aren't over or under in any particular area um, the next thing we have is the bass. Now, I kind of have a couple different bass layers here, but they're all overall creating one sound. So um, you can see this and this. These are not taking up the low end. The sub lock is taking up the low end. And basically what I'm doing with these is this is the space, you know, the entire song. This is one of the, this is a little mini lesson, you know, about drops, about a, how to create an effective drop. There's a lot of elements to it. But one of the primary things you can do to create an effective drop in a song like this is to have your kick be the substance of your low end until your drop comes. So I, this song has no low end in it until the drop happens. And what that actually does is it creates a very much of a um, an explosion feeling when you hear this bass come in. It's like, oh, you can feel it in your chest because now there's low end in those spaces that there wasn't low end before. So it's one of those really cool little tricks you learn uh, to make the drop effective. Don't have an 808. Don't have any bass in your in your lyrics or, you know, your buildup. Wait to drop the bass till the drop actually hits, and you're going to find that it impacts people a lot more because it, it actually adds so much to whatever else is happening. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the bass. It takes up that low end. Then we got our drums. Now, I've got a lot of different things going on here. A lot of people probably didn't really super hear these, but these are just kind of some background perks. Again, each of them in their own frequency space. Um, these toms come in on the second half of the verse. You got these stick things. I really like those. Then we got the hi-hat. Again, like let, let's look at this. Like, like I have the air, and then I, I really have it up at 20. Like, who's going to hear that? Well, a lot of people, actually. And when you have it boosted in its space, it sounds really good. Um, got a clap here. I don't know if this is going to play. Oh, hey, it's working. Um, I don't know why there's an absent thing right there. Um, got the snare. I love the way that I got this to sound. We got our kick. Again, you're going to notice these are all taking up different frequency ranges. Got a little, I actually added this right before I released it because I felt like it just needed a little spice. Just got that little woo. Uh, then we got the cymbals. You know, these are never anything fancy. Uh, we got, and then we just got a bunch of special effects. I won't get into all those. But yeah, so that's pretty much all the tracks and... Uh, Pretty much the whole theme of what I'm getting at is that you want your EQ spaces to be filled. You want, when you look at this, you want to know what you have filling where. You don't want empty space in here, you know, except for maybe like that two, 300 range. I, I hate that range. And uh, <laughs> that, that's just like a me thing. There's a lot of mixing engineers out there who disagree with that and say that 
this is an important range to have in your song. And, and it can be in certain situations. There's, there's no rule of thumb for it. Like, it really depends on the song you're mixing. But in my genres, I hate this area. <laughs> it's, for me, it's just mud. So obviously, you can see I took an easy, easy, tiny bit out there. But mostly mastering is where I'm taking that kind of stuff out. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the mixing phase. And yeah, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you guys are liking this and I will see you guys next week in the mastering phase. We're going to open up ozone. I'm going to show you how I actually prep a song in ozone. So yeah.